guys, coach will open. Raise your hand real quick, and I'll get you. A Send cards, send texts, what texts, whatever. Um, a lot of friends out there, a lot of supporters, and we really do appreciate it. But I'd like to give everybody a little message, which I kind of feel, uh, you know, we, we we all go around thinking I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to go up and go to work today. Um, how about replacing have to with glad to? Glad to get up today. Glad to go to work today. Glad to have the opportunity. Glad to be here. So that's how I'm feeling right now. We had a good work week uh, this week. Uh, I think the key to the drill, which I've talked to the players about a couple times, is uh, discipline. Discipline to be able to execute, be physical. Um, everybody do their job in the game, be able to sustain, sustain that kind of mental intensity for 60 minutes in the game. Uh, these games have always been tough games. They've always been close games. They've always been physical games. So I think you've got to get your mindset uh, to be ready to play a game like that. Um, but it will always come down to who can do the best job of executing, blocking, tackling, turnovers, taking care of the ball, uh, making big plays, eliminating big plays, uh, maintaining poise, playing smart, being disciplined. Uh, I know it will be a great atmosphere in the stadium. Uh, I think it will be important to our players uh, that our fans are really into this game. Um, got a lot of national attention riding on this game, and uh, this game has turned into a big rivalry for both sides, and uh, I think we should respond to it accordingly. Okay, we'll start in the back with Charlie. Just how have you seen Deshaun Hand and Josh Jacobs progress this week, and what do you think the chances are that either of those guys will be able to play Saturday? Well, Josh Jacobs is fine. He'll be able to play, no question. Um, Deshaun Hand has practiced, got reps. I don't think we'll be able to know whether he'll be able to play or not until pregame. Uh, he's been medically cleared. Uh, but still, anytime a player's coming off of injury, I think that player's got to have confidence that he can go out there and do his job well. And I usually talk to the player about that. And, you know, we'll make a decision in pregame on his status for the game. Go back in the middle, there at the back with Cecil. Coach, this is away from Saturday's game, but have you had a chance to communicate with Jim McElwain at all this week? I, I, I put a call into him, left him a message, didn't get a hold of him. I understand he went to see his granddaughter in Arizona. Uh, I did talk to Jimmy about him um, and how he was doing. Sent a message through Jimmy to him. Uh, but, you know, as the week winds down here, I certainly, you know, like to have an opportunity to let him know that we're here to support him in every way that we can. Um, and I think Jim did a really good job there to get to the SEC championship game the last two years. So, you know, the first two years he was there, um, you know, we had to play him, and uh, they're always difficult preparation. And I'm just sorry it didn't work out for him better, and uh, we do everything we can to help him in the future. In the middle with Michael. Just with all the talk about polls and, and rankings and their value, I just wondered how you approached your vote every week in the coaches' poll. Well, I, I, I approach my vote in the coaches' poll very seriously. You know, I think it's important to, uh, for all of us as coaches to try to do a good job of knowing who the best teams are, uh, using some input from other people in our organization to try to be as accurate as possible, even though this is all very subjective. Um, when you make these kind of votes, uh, if you don't play each other and everybody doesn't play each other, you really don't know who has the best team. So, um, but as I said on Monday, uh, when it comes to how does that affect our position, what we think about the season? It's all about the next game. Uh, we're going to play three ranked opponents in the next four weeks for, of the season. And if we don't win all those games, we, we won't even be talking about rankings. Right? So what, what becomes most important? The next
next game, the team you have to play, preparing the right way, making sure you're ready to go play your best and being able to sustain that week in and week out. This game this week is the most important game on the schedule, so uh, that's what we're looking for. And the rest of it really doesn't matter because it doesn't matter where you're at right now. It matters where you end up. And you got to do the things you got to do to end up where you want to end up. A couple more. We'll start here with Mark. I'm just wondering how you've seen a quarterback, Danny Edling, grow in their offense this year. Done a nice job of executing their offense. Um, you know, I think he's improved. You know, quite a bit in terms of uh, his understanding, his confidence that he plays with. Uh, he's been, I think, a little more, much more efficient. You know, in terms of passing efficiency, uh, hadn't turned the ball over a lot. Uh, has scrambled and made some key plays for him and used his feet when he needs to. So, uh, I think he's done a really good job of playing winning football for them. And um, you know, we have a lot of respect for what he can do and what their skill guys can do as well. Sorry, Coach, we do have two more. We'll start with Alex and then Reiner. You speak often about your messages to the team, you know, and even using you know, your platform here as those messages. How can you use or do you plan to use this the new college football playoff rankings, getting number two, kind of dropping a little bit as motivation this week or just? You know, I hadn't really thought about it, to be honest with you. I didn't even know we were number two until just a little bit ago. So that's how important I think it is. I, I, I would rather our players not be thinking about it. I would rather them not be talking about it. I would rather them be thinking about what they need to do to play well in this game. Um, you know, it's like getting on, you know, like two thirds, three quarters of the way up the mountain, uh, and you're standing on an icy slope, uh, and you're worried about some airplane flying by and you fall and bust your ass. I mean, that's basically what, what, what it's what, what's equivalent rather than focusing on what you need to do to keep climbing. I, I, I don't think I can make it any clearer. And I know you all want to make this a big story. Make it one. But don't make it about me because it's not going to be about me. We'll finish up with Ryan. How have you, uh, how's the catapult system helped you kind of, uh, basically pace out the conditioning of your team, especially at this stage of the year? And how much have you got, you know, kind of adjusted based off of the fact that you've had, you know, 15 game seasons each of the last two years? And, uh, and how do you think the players in general are able to kind of learn themselves how to condition from maybe year one to year two when they're playing in, in, the, in the college ranks? Well, I think the, the yearly data it helps us to determine and sort of give us a baseline knowledge of uh, a player's level of condi conditioning. Uh, it gives you a uh, baseline of how many explosive movements does he normally have and at what speed. And then you can compare that to where he is now in terms of what is his, his explosive movements and how many times can he duplicate that. And if a player can't do it when he's in tip-top shape, then probably needs to be, you need to cut down his reps, try to get him to recover a little bit. Uh, and I think it allows you to see not in total, although you can look at it totally and you can look at it by position, how your team is progressing through the year. I mean, you would like for your team to be going this way and not this way. And because we have three or four years of data now, we see when our teams have gone up and when they start to, to fall and how we need to try to adjust, you know that. So, and I think we've learned over the last three or four years how to manage that a little bit better, how to cut down practice on, how to cut down conditioning, how to rest certain guys, uh, how to respect, you know, this information that we have. But from a player's perspective, um, you know, they can't lie to themselves. You know, if their, their explosive movement is 20 miles per hour and they go out practice and they're hitting 14, and they're not hustling, they're not giving effort. We know that too. Um, so if they're out there really giving effort and they can't hit 20, then that's our management issue. So, um, and how many times can they duplicate it? Thanks, Coach. That's it. That's it. Thanks for the good question. That was a good question. But what I would like to know is how that affects the poll. <laughs> How does a catapult affect a pole? <laughs>